folks, welcome back to Jerome B. Farm and Homestead. So it's uh, Tuesday, March 15th. So we're to mid-March, can you believe that? Uh, everything is running about two weeks behind this year. I looked at some of my notes and uh, I'd already rotated my hives uh, by this time last year. So I need to get that done uh, where I move the tops to the bottoms and the bottoms to the tops. So that's how I do my uh, two uh, deep system here. But uh, yeah, uh, also the red buds uh, aren't showing sign of blooming yet, and they'll start blooming, you know, uh, first part of April into the first, second week is usually when they start, and that's when the heavy nectar flow starts. So uh, that snow we had really put us behind. Uh, so it, yeah, we were snowed in for about a week. So that was, that's strange for around here, which what's not strange about the weather anymore. So today what I'm going to do is uh, this hive one here, you may have saw where I locked them down uh, in a previous video. I shut the little entrance to the top part of hive one, which it's a double screen combined. So what that is, it's two separate hives that are separated by a double screen in the middle. The bees can't touch, so they they stay separate uh, they don't think there's an extra queen in there and try and kill a queen and they get to share the warmth over winter so they were two really small hives going into winter and uh, they likely would not have survived on their own so that helps them get through winter they have that extra mass of bees and they share the warmth through that double screen so uh, last night uh, or yesterday i came down here shooting this same video and uh I went to get them and move them and there's bees flying in and out of the top. So where I'd locked them down and moved that uh, telescoping cover back, thinking I was closing off that where that top uh, air notch was, that top entrance, uh, it was actually in the back. So I opened it up. <laughs> so I got down there and there's bees flying in and out from uh, underneath the cover. And I was like, what is the going on there? So I couldn't move them. So I waited till it got dark, ran down here, and uh, I moved that cover to the front. So they got all locked down last night. Uh, and I just checked and they are still locked down, which is a good thing. So I'm gonna get them moved today and I'm gonna move them over to, I think number five position. And in fact, I think that's where it came from. And uh, I'm gonna leave them locked down for at least one more day. And uh, the reason you, you keep them locked up like that is when they come out finally you want them to be locked down for a while so when they come out they they realize they're in a different spot uh something about locking them down that like that uh, makes a reorient so they'll reorient to that location uh, if you don't do that the bees like if i just open them up today after i move them the field bees would fly out and uh, they would go back to their old location and uh and that's not what we want. We want the bees to stay in their own hives. So uh, with that said, let's get over there and uh, get that thing moved. And uh, we'll do an inspection on the bottom part and see how it looks. We won't inspect the top part because that would let the bees out. So let's get in there and see what we find. Okay, here's hive one. And let's take a look at the entrance there to the bottom. Yeah, see bees hanging out there coming and going a few you know it's not a real strong hive so you're not going to see a whole bunch but uh let's uh let's prep our area over here where we're going to move that and get it ready so this is a number five location right here okay Looks like we had a mouse living here. A little bit of mouse poop. And this is a screen bottom board. And we've got the insert in. I'll go ahead and scrape this off. This is just junk from uh, when they were here before. Little parts of the comb that they chew off. And other trash. 
I'm going away from these uh, screened bottoms. They don't hold up and I don't like the way they, they're not a good seal when you start doing your oxalic acid treatments. So as soon as these are falling apart, I'm going to replace them with solids uh, because they last longer too. They're not very durable. Okay, we're going to bring that uh, top hive over here and I'm going to bring the, the double screen with it uh, because that's keeping them in. And I'm going to set it right on top of here and uh, I'll go ahead and use the the lid and everything i'm just going to move it uh, the whole thing right on over here and we may get a few bees from the bottom hive that are on the bottom side of that screen and that's okay there's really nothing we can do about that so this here's our double screen board right there so i'm going to raise it up right here and break it apart there I'll probably smoke it a little to try and get as many bees off of the bottom of that as possible because this is the top to that hive. So I got to be careful not to let this slide off of here and let those bees out from the top. Okay, let's get her moved. Okay, as you can see, there's no bees coming in or out. Probably gonna reduce this down here a little bit with my patented uh, Jerome Bee Farm hive reducers. There we go. Just right. Got some propolis there in the way. Okay. Looks about right. So again, we got this pulled to the front because the notch on the inner covers for the top escape or vent hole, whatever you want to call it, is back here. And you can see I've got it up there flush. So this is where they were coming in and out because <laughs> I'd push this back thinking I was locking them in and I actually opened it up. So they're locked in there now. There's not a B1 coming in or out of there. All right, let's go do a quick inspection on that bottom part of Hive 1. Okay, you can see I gave them a pollen patty. And uh, they're working on it a little bit. Boy, this hive is weak. Look at that. It's like I see bees here, here, and just a few here. There is not hardly anything in here. Get this out of our way for now. You see where they're, yeah, they're working on that pretty good. They might, they might need some sugar, but I think I see honey here. No, that's empty. These bees may be starving out. That's why they're so small. A little bit of honey right there. Yeah, these are nothing in these. So the bees to me look a little lethargic too. Well, there's honey right there. And there's liquid in here and pollen there. So this looks like pollen sub that I had been feeding open. So they're not completely out. They're just small. I'll have to go look at the history on this queen. I think this was a swarm queen. There she is, marked white. And there's liquid in these cells here. Let 
This is a good shot of her. Yeah, see all the liquid in there? Uh, that may be some of the honey that I had put out in the from the cappings tank cleanup over the last week. And there was no sign of brood there at all. No eggs, nothing. Same thing here. I think we got us a dud queen. Well, no, wait a minute. There's one cell right there. Okay, she's actually laid right here. Not much. There were eggs there. And there was one capped cell. <clears throat> and there's some liquid in here. So they're not starving. They got pollen patty. They just have a population issue. And that queen ain't laying. And there's honey here. So they may not have been warm enough. So really what this hive here needs is to be reduced down into a uh, five frame nuke. I'm not gonna do that today. I'm gonna get them covered up and uh, get this pollen patty back down there on them. And uh, so they can get warmed up and uh, go from here. I flipped this over to make space for that pollen patty. Yeah, so we're gonna have to keep an eye on this. Uh, I'm gonna go back and check the history on this queen and see what she looks like. And uh, here goes one of these guys flying in a parachute thing. I'll give you a shot of that. Guy's crazy. That's on the list of things I wouldn't be caught dead in. Okay, yeah, so I wanna uh, learn where this queen came from. I think she was a, a late swarm is, is what she was. But uh, anyway, I marked her last year. But uh, we need to get this figured out. Uh, it may, she may be a dud, so we may just need to, you know, let this one die out and uh, when we get our swarm cells in the spring, this will be one of the spots that uh, we start a new hive in. So that, uh, hopefully she can get it going. So that's it. Uh, give me a thumbs up on the video if you would. And don't forget to subscribe on your way out. We'll catch you on the next beekeeping video. Y'all take care.